Hey everybody, it's Ivy here. I wanted to make a quick video about the very basics of using OBS Studio to record and stream gameplay. This video is going to go over how to capture gameplay from the same machine that you are recording on and how to add webcam and microphone inputs. These are the three most common things most people will want to use OBS Studio for. I won't be going over anything like scene changing, overlays, or delays in this video. So what is OBS Studio? OBS Studio is a free and open source software for video recording and live streaming. It's extremely useful for anyone who wants to record or stream their gameplay. OBS Studio has many built-in features that make setting up a streamer recording very easy. For this video, I am using OBS Studio version 18.0.1 for Windows. If you are using a different version of OBS Studio, some things may have changed. I wanted to make sure to mention this as I had some confusion on another video where I didn't specify the version and key features of the video didn't exist yet for some people. Make sure to check your version before asking questions. The first thing you are going to want to do before you start recording or streaming any gameplay is to go into the settings and get everything set up. I'm not going to go over any specific settings during this video as it varies quite a bit depending on what your setup is. There are tons of tutorials about various setups online, so do some research and try a few things out to see what works best for you. In the general settings, you won't need to change much right off the bat. Over time, you might want to change a few things in here to make your life a bit easier, but nothing is important to get started. The important pieces are going to be the stream, output, and video settings. You will need to have your streaming service and key set up before you can stream. For the stream type, you can choose between a streaming service or a custom streaming server. A streaming service includes services such as Twitch, YouTube, Facebook, and more. A custom streaming server would be if you were using a private server for streaming, such as your own personal server. Most people will be using a streaming service. Next would be to pick your service and select your server. You will want to pick the server that is closest to you geographically. This will keep your upload speeds down. Lastly, you put in your stream key. You will find this somewhere in your account settings for the streaming service you selected. Next is your output. This is where you choose the settings for the video and audio output of a stream and recording. Changes here will affect the look of what you output, including any artifacts or lag. Again, I won't be going over this as it heavily depends on your setup and I suggest you do some research and testing for yourself. Change some settings, save it, record a bit, watch the video, and repeat until you're happy with your output. I can't help a ton with suggestions on what you should change if you come across problems with your recordings, so I'm sorry in advance. There are three tabs here, streaming, recording, and audio. I have seen people suggest having different settings for local recordings versus streaming, so OBS Studio has separate tabs for this, which is nice. There's also a tab for audio settings, but you may not have to touch it at all for a basic setup. Being able to name your tracks will come in handy if you need to separate out your audio tracks to be able to edit them independently in a video editor, but that's a bit more advanced. Next is audio. You won't have to change much here to get started. Video is another important one to look into. You're going to want to make sure your resolution and FPS are set correctly and look into what downscaling filter will work best for you. There are some hotkeys you can set up. These make it easier to do common tasks, such as starting and stopping recordings and streams. You can set these up now or leave them alone and come back after you use the software a bit to see which shortcuts you want. Last, there are some advanced settings. These are more settings you probably won't need to touch for a while. Once you are happy with your settings, you'll want to add some sources so you can actually record things. A source would be anything you want OBS Studio to record, like gameplay, a webcam, audio, and so on. The first one you will want to include is your gameplay window. For the sake of this video, I am only going over how to record a game that you were playing on the same computer you were running OBS Studio on. I find it easiest to just choose Game Capture from the Source menu. You don't have to name it, but it becomes easier to see what sources you have available when you add more and have different scenes. I just named mine Overwatch, since that's the game I'm using for this video. The section below for adding an existing source is for when you have previously added a source and want to reuse it for another scene. Next, you have to pick what the input actually is. The default is a full screen application, which assumes you are playing your game full screen and have no other full screen applications. In my case, I'm not playing Overwatch in full screen, and since I have two monitors, any full screen application isn't specific enough. In this case, you can choose Capture a Specific Window, and then choose the name of the window you want to capture. And there it is, pretty easy. The rest of the settings you will most likely not need to go into for basic setup aside from capturing the cursor. You will most likely want to capture the cursor. That determines if the cursor is visible or not in your recording or stream. Once you save, you are able to edit the output of your source. 
I don't have Overwatch as a full screen application, so it has black borders around it to fill in the rest of my resolution. You can edit this by dragging on the red squares in the corners of the source on the left side and moving the source around. If you do this, you are scaling your source and it might get a little blurry. For fine grained movement, you can click on the source and use the arrow keys for moving the source one pixel at a time. The left side of this view is your workspace, and the right side is what you would be broadcasting into your stream or recording. When you are ready to move something to the broadcast space, click on the transition button in the middle. Now you can edit the left side and the right side will stay intact. For example, if I scale the source on the left side, it won't replicate on the right. This means I can edit my workspace while recording or streaming without the changes going live until I hit transition. So now that you have the game's video, you need to get the audio as well. If you were to record or stream at this point, you would only get the video for the game, and you probably don't want that. To do this, you want to add another source. This time, it's going to be an audio output capture source. The difference between input and output is where the sound is going relative to the computer. Anything that involves sound going into the computer, such as a microphone, would be input. Anything that would be coming out of the computer, such as going to your headphones or speakers, would be output. The game's audio is coming from the computer, so it would be output. Once you name your source, you get to choose the device that the audio is coming from. As far as I know, OBS Studio doesn't have a way for you to choose a window or application to get sound from without doing audio splitting, which I am not going to get into today. This means it is probably best to just pick the default as your device, unless you have your audio split to go to a specific device already. Unfortunately, this also means if your computer makes any sort of noise, such as Discord, notifications, or music, it will show up in your stream or recording. If this will be a problem, I suggest looking into muting all other sounds or research how to get around this in OBS Studio. Audio sources should show up in the bottom center rectangle, but we need to transition the scene first. Any changes made to the sources won't show up in the broadcasted view until you hit transition. Make sure you transition after you are done making any changes. I have forgotten to do this quite often and spent a while trying to figure out what was wrong with my setup. Here you can see that we are getting sound from Overwatch. If I go through and make a character say a voice line, you can see the audio volume change as they speak. In the audio mixer, you can change the master volume of an audio source. This is handy when you have multiple sources and need to adjust them to ensure they can all be heard accordingly. Clicking on the setting wheel next to an audio source will allow you to add filters for noise suppression, gain, and more. You can also change the device that the sound is listening to. If you just wanted to record or stream gameplay and audio with no microphone or webcam, you could just click start streaming or start recording and be on your way. In this case, we do want to add a webcam and microphone to our setup. To add a webcam, we need to add a new video capture device source. This now opens a window which allows you to select a device. This is where you would select your webcam. You can also configure your webcam's video from here. You can then resize your webcam view and put it wherever you want. Once again, we have to transition before our changes go live. Next, we want to add an audio input capture source to add a microphone. All you have to do is choose whatever device you want to get input from, whether it's your headphones microphone, your webcams, or whatever. Once we transition, you can see it is now added to your mixer. This is where you want to start messing with gates, noise suppression, master volume, and anything else you need to change to make sure your microphone can be heard over your game audio. It takes a lot of trial and error, but you'll be happier when it is all set up. You can also go into the settings wheel next to the mixer for more advanced settings. So at this point, we have a very basic setup that lots of streamers use. We have game audio and video, a webcam, and a microphone. At this point, you would be good to go. Before you actually start recording or streaming, you should do a few test runs to make sure everything works correctly, that you can hear everything well, there's no lag in any inputs, and there are no other issues. Before you stream, I suggest you set up a private stream on whatever streaming service you use to make sure that everything looks and sounds good live. Look up how to test your stream for the streaming service that you were using. One of the nice things about OBS Studio is that you can make changes on the fly. If you are streaming and someone in your chat points out that they can't hear you or that there is some weird visual error, you can make a change, click transition, and you're done. This is a bit harder to do when you were recording since there is no one there to tell you something is wrong, but you can stop recording, check on the recording, and then start recording again if you need to. This won't add to the same recording, but it's better than wasting hours of gameplay. So that's it for this video. OBS Studio has so many more features that make recording and streaming gameplay easy and fun to do, so I'd love to make more advanced videos as well. I have plans to do some on recording from a console or another machine, adding scenes and overlays, working with delays, and more. If you guys have any requests though, please let me know. I'd love to know what to prioritize. I'd also love to hear any tips you might know that I could throw in a video as well. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Bye bye!